Good morning, students. This is Mr. Boyd. Um, we're going to take another look at an algebra lesson here today. So over the last few lessons, we've been looking at solving quadratics by factoring and um, taking square roots, using square roots. Um, there are cases, though, where we cannot factor a quadratic equation, um, and using square roots is not a viable tool. So today we want to look at uh, a new lesson, which is called completing the square. So let's go ahead and dive in. So as it says here, some of the quadratics, some quadratics can be solved easily by factoring, and you always want to start there. This is your number one tool. Okay? For example, this uh, x squared plus 6x minus 16 could be factored into x plus 8 times x minus 2, which gives us the two solutions, negative 8 and positive 2. When it can't be factored using integers, we have two options. The f we could use the quadratic formula, um, but we can also use the completing the square method. And that's important because they're going to ask you quite a few questions on this throughout the hit course of the um, end of course exam. So make sure you take good notes, pay attention. Um, this is a pretty detailed and difficult lesson for middle schoolers. Um, and high schoolers alike, but um, please pay close attention to what's going on here. Okay, so number one, since it can't be factored using integers, we're going to write the equation in ax squared plus bx equals negative c. In other words, we want to get the constant on the right side. And we want that over there all by itself, just like this here. Okay? The next step is to take half of B. Well, if we list our A, B, and C, we see in this equation that A is 1, B is 8, and C happens to be 16, but we just moved it across the equal sign. Okay, so if we're going to find half of b, then that's going to be half of 8. So half of b would be half of 8, which is 4. And then we're going to square that and add it to both sides. So notice we just added 16 to both sides. That would be the answer to 4 squared. The next step is to factor the left side. So here you can see that they factored the left side, x squared plus 8x plus 16, into x plus 4 times x plus 4 equals 26. And now we can use our square root method to finish solving this. So we would take the square root of both sides, and we end up with x plus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 26. We'll leave that as the square root of 26 because we cannot simplify that radical. There are no perfect squares in 26. And then we would subtract 4 from both sides. And that would give us our solution of negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 26. Okay? All right, let's roll down to some of these um, quote, unquote, homework problems. And I'm going to do a couple examples with you at, right out of the homework problems. And then uh, you guys can finish them, finish the rest of them for your assignment. So step one is to get the constant on the right side or on the opposite side from everything else. So we're going to go ahead and add 3 to both sides. That's going to leave me with a squared plus 2a equals 3. Now I want to, I want to take half of b. Well, b in this case happens to be 2. So half of 2, and then when I get that answer, I'm actually going to square it. So half of 2 is 1, and then 1 squared equals 1. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides of this equation. So I'm going to add 1 here, and I'm going to add 1 here. That's going to leave me with a squared plus 2a plus 1 equals 4. 
Notice I went ahead and simplified the right-hand side. Now we need to factor the left-hand side. Well, I'm looking for two numbers. When I multiply A times C, I see that my AC equals 1. AC equals 1. And I need a sum of 2. Well, F happens to be 1 and 1, so my two factors are A plus 1 times A plus 1 equals 4. Well, A plus 1 times A plus 1 is A plus 1 squared. All right, now we can take the square root of both sides. When we do that, we get a plus 1 equals plus or minus 2. And then to find our two solutions, we would need to do a plus 1 equals 2, negative 2, or a plus 1 equals positive 2. And then here we would subtract 1 from both sides. So a equals negative 3, or a equals 1. Okay. All right, let's jump over. I'm going to work across the page instead of down the page. So I'm going to do number 7 with you guys as well. So again, let's, let's go ahead and just lay out a, b, and c. a is 1. b is negative 12. And C happens to be 26. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to subtract 26 from both sides. That's going to give me M squared minus 12M. I'm going to leave some space in here to put my new C in there have negative 26 on this side. Okay, so now I need to take a look at what is half of B. Well, B is 12, so half of negative 12 would be negative 6. And then I'm going to square that. So negative 6 squared gets added to both sides. So I'm going to add a negative 6 squared to this side. And I'm going to add a negative 6 squared to this side. Now, you might wonder why I didn't go ahead and square that. But I think maybe you'll see this in just a moment. Because it helps me with my factoring. Because I know from years of experience that this turns out, this side here turns out to be m minus 6 squared. And I'm getting that minus 6 right out of that parenthesis right there. Okay? Negative 26 plus 36 is going to leave me with 10. So next, we'll take the square root of both sides. Okay, and that's going to give me m minus 6 equals plus or minus the square root of 10. There are no perfect squared factors in 10, so we'll just leave that as a radical. And, of course, our last step to isolate M is to add 6 to both sides. So that's going to give us M equals 6 plus or minus the square root of 10. So this would be our final answer right here. Okay, let's jump down and do a couple more of these while we're on it. Okay, I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit here. So I'm going to add 8 to both sides because I want my constant on the right side. Again, I'm going to leave a little bit of space for my new C. Okay. I'm going to take half of B and square it and add it to both sides. So half of negative 2 would be negative 1 squared. I'm going to add that to both sides. Negative 1 squared is just 1, so I'm going to add positive 1 to the right-hand side. I'm actually adding positive 1 to the left-hand side as well. That's going to give me the factors of a minus 1 squared. 
the two numbers that multiply to give me positive 1 and add to give me negative 2 is negative 1. It's going to leave me with a 9 on the right-hand side. Now I'm going to take the square root of both sides because I have something squared equals a number. It's going to give me a minus 1 equals plus or minus 3. Next I'm going to add 1 to both sides is going to give me a equals 1 plus or minus 3. So my final solution would be 1 plus 3, which is 4, and 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. So my solution set is negative 2 comma 4. Okay, one more time. So we're going to subtract 20 from both sides. We'll get that constant on the right-hand side again. I know every other case we've tried to get zero on the right-hand side, but when you're completing the square, you want to get the constant on the right-hand side because you're going to complete a perfect square here. Okay, so now I'm going to take half of 12, which is 6, and square it and add it to both sides. So 6 squared would be 36, so I'm going to add 36 to the right-hand side and 36 to the left-hand side. Again, I don't write the 36 here because it gives me what my factor should be. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 plus 6 is 12. Negative 20 plus 36 would leave me with 16 on the right-hand side when I add these two together. Okay. Next step, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. It's going to leave me with x plus 6 equals plus or minus 4. Next, I'll subtract 6 from both sides to isolate my x. So now x equals negative 6 plus or minus 4. And so my two solutions would be negative 6 plus 4 which is negative 2, and negative 6 minus 4, which is negative 10. So my solution set would end up being negative 10, comma, negative 2. Okay, guys, hope you found this lesson helpful. Um, if you did, click on the subscribe button and uh, the thumbs up button and get notifications whenever I put out new videos. Have a great day.